Welcome to the second part of this two-part lecture series on Bayesian model updating. So this is a brief overview of today's lecture. We'll first give a brief recap of the concept of Bayesian model updating, followed by a revision of the motivation behind advanced sampling techniques. From there, I'll give a detailed explanation behind the workings of the following advanced sampling techniques. Markov chain Monte Carlo sampler, MCMC, Transitional Markov chain Monte Carlo, TMCMC, and Sequential Monte Carlo sampler, SMC. From there, I'll then give a brief introduction to the tutorials that are made available on OpenCosan, whereby users can actually have fun and go with it to actually appreciate the implementation of the three advanced sampling techniques used to do Bayesian model updating in the engineering context. And after all this is achieved, I will then give a brief recap or a summary of this two-part lecture series as a way to wrap up this presentation as a whole. So without further ado, let's proceed to our presentation proper. So as a short revision from the previous lecture series, we actually have Bayesian model updating, which is essentially a probabilistic model updating technique that's based on Bayes inference, which can be described by the following equation. And this equation is defined by the prior, which describes the prior knowledge of the parameter that you wish to estimate, the likelihood function, which this gives a degree of agreement between the model and the observations that you made, and the evidence, which is the normalization constant, of the posterior distribution, which gives you the updated knowledge of the unknown parameters given the data that you observed. Now, recall that more often than not, you know, this evidence, which is the normalization constant, may not be straightforward to compute. And as such, the posterior is usually represented in this proportionality relation and is usually unnormalized. And as you can see, the main ingredients that are required are the prior and the likelihood. And to generate samples from distribution, the standard tool will be Monte Carlo sampling. However, because of the fact that the posterior that we have is usually unnormalized, standard Monte Carlo technique would not be able to do the job. And thus, this brings the need to actually use advanced sampling techniques. So when we ended off the first part, the first lecture series, we actually talk about this three advanced sampling methods which are commonly used to address Bayesian model updating problems. Markov chain Monte Carlo, transitional Markov chain Monte Carlo, and sequential Monte Carlo samplers. In the next slide, I will actually go through each of these methods in detail. So for a start, let's go through a brief introduction of MCMC. Such, this idea of MCMC is conceptualized by Nicholas Metropolis, the man who you see on the right, who actually postulated the, and proposed the use of Markov chains to generate samples. In essence, new samples are generated based on the current sample through the use of an distribution known as the proposal distribution. And it is, it is made understandable that this chain will actually continue to run and it will be allowed to run until it approaches the stationary distribution which corresponds to the posterior itself. And the simplest variant of the MCMC sampler, which is the easiest to implement, will be the accept reject algorithm, in other words, the Metropolis Hastings algorithm. The workings of this algorithm will be discussed in the next slide. So this is the summarized workflow of the Metropolis Hastings algorithm. This algorithm is initialized by first sampling a random sample from the prior, which will serve as a starting point of the Markov chain. And from there, Candidate samples are randomly sampled through the use of the proposal distribution. As an example, I provide this illustration on the right. And the proposal distribution is a Gaussian distribution that is represented by this red curve over here that is centered about the current, uh, the current sample that we have, theta i. So essentially what happens is that this Gaussian dist distribution will actually uh, be used to sample a candidate sample that is represented by theta star, and after which the posterior will be evaluated at this candidate sample, and it will be compared to the posterior value evaluated at the current sample. 
and this comparison will be done in the form of taking the ratio between these two quantities and let this be represented by alpha. After which, a random sample is generated from a uniform distribution between 0 to 1. And if alpha is greater than r, we will accept this candidate sample and proposal distribution will now shift in the next iteration to this blue dotted curve and will be centered about this new candidate sample which was just accepted. Or else, otherwise, if it's rejected, basically the candidate, the proposal distribution will stay as it is and it will continue to generate a next candidate sample from there and this acceptance rejection will be computed. And this whole procedure repeats itself in a loop for subsequent iterations and this will be done until n samples are obtained from the sampler itself. So in other words, what this means is that every iteration would generate one sample. And if you wish to obtain, let's say, n samples from the posterior, this loop will repeat itself n times. And as an illustration to how the MCMC -MC sampler works, I have provided here a short video clip just to show how it works as a whole. So suppose we have a two-dimensional posterior. We have this circle here that represents the contour of the Gaussian proposal distribution. As you can see, it is centered about the current sample. And from there, it is used to actually sample candidate samples. And the rejection, acceptance rejection criteria is, is being evaluated before it moves into the next iteration. And as this procedure continues all the way, you can see that the marginal distribution, the histograms for, for each of the dimension, for each of the input variables that is being sampled from, will eventually tend towards the marginal distribution. So now we'll then give a brief introduction to the transitional Markov chain Monte Carlo sampler. It is based on the adaptive Metropolis Hastings algorithm, AMH for short. And instead of sampling directly from the posterior, it adopts the use of intermediate transitional distributions that's defined as the likelihood distribution to the power of a tempering parameter beta j multiplied by the prior. j here denotes the iteration step or the transition step, which lasts from 1 to m. Beta j is a tempering parameter such that at every iteration, it increases from 0 to 1. So at every iteration, this value of beta increases until the maximum value of 1. So from this log by this logic, essentially the transitional distribution would transit from the initial prior when beta j equals to 0 to the posterior when beta j equals to 1. And just to give an illustration of transition distribution, I have here on the right a series of distributions that transit from the uniform prior to the sharp peak Gaussian posterior through the use of a Gaussian likelihood function. Now, as you can see, for different values of beta j, the transition distribution will actually will actually change in its shape, and as the value of beta j gets higher, it tends more close towards the Gaussian shape posterior. And this essentially is the concept behind transition distributions. And in order to ensure a smooth and gradual transition, such that the shape of the transition distributions do not change drastically between iterations, this value or the change in beta j has to be small. And one advantage that TMCMC has over the Metropolis Hastings sampler, as I explained in the previous slide, is that TMCMC is able to perform parallel sampling in that if you want to generate n samples, all n samples can be generated simultaneously within an iteration compared to the serial computation by the Metropolis Hastings in which one sample is only generated per iteration. So this is a summarized workflow of the TMCMC sampler. So we, the sample is initialized by sampling n samples from the prior itself. And from there, this tempering parameter is computed and, from, and using which we, it's then able to compute the first transition distribution. And once this is done, at each of the initial sample, uh, samples, you create 
a single step Markov chain which with all each of these n samples being the starting point of the Markov chain. So in essence, this algorithm actually will create n single step Markov chains, each of which will start from each of the initially sampled samples. And from there, samples are generated from each other, one sample is generated from each of these Markov chain using the Metropolis Hastings sampling technique. And these samples, and this is how the samples are generated from the transition distribution. So this procedure would loop itself over the numerous iteration j's from 1 to m until the last iteration where you actually obtain the posterior when beta j equals to 1. And this is how one would obtain samples using TMCMC to generate samples from the posterior itself. And finally, this is a int brief introduction to a sequential Monte Carlo sampler. It is based on the sequential importance sampling technique, or SRF for short, particle filter algorithm. And more often than not, it's adopted for systems identification. And one advantage that SMC sampler has over TMCMC and the MCMC is that SMC is able to generate samples from dynamic posteriors. In essence, posteriors which, which actually evolve with time. An SMC sampler is able to sample from such posteriors in a sequential manner. And thus, it is actually a recursive algorithm. And an SMC sampler itself utilizes two main concepts in sampling. The first of which is importance with assignment to the samples via important sampling and resampling technique. These details will be explained in the workflow in the next slide. So in the sequential multi color sampler, we actually initialize by sampling n samples from the prior in the same fashion as the TMCMC sampler. And initial weights are then assigned to each of the initial samples. And these weights are defined as the likelihood value evaluated at the individual sample. So for example, if I want to actually find a weight of theta 1, the weight of theta 1 is actually the value of likelihood evaluated at theta 1. So it's essentially is the value of p theta 1 given d. And once this is done, once all this weight, initial, weight assignment is done, the, this value known as the effective sample size is then calculated. The effective sample size is actually defined as the reciprocal of the sum of squares of the initial weights. And from there, this effective sample size is then compared to a threshold value which is set at half the sample size. If n effective, the effective sample size is less than n over 2, a resampling phase is then initiated. In a resampling phase, the initial samples are being resampled with replacement according to their initial weights. And once this is done, the weights of these resampled samples is then reset to 1 over n. And from there, it, the algorithm will proceed to update each of the samples and their respective weights. And this procedure would carry on in loop until you achieve a certain termination criteria, such as having the, the desired coefficient of variation of the estimates of the input variables. But I also like to take note that should this effective sample size be greater than n over 2, this resampling phase would not be initiated and the step will proceed straight to update the, the, initial, the input variables and their respective weights. For more information on each of these advanced sampling techniques, one can actually refer to the following sources listed over here. And finally, I would like to give an introduction to some of the tutorials that are made available on OpenCasson. So we have four sets of tutorials available of increasing difficulty. We have a 1D linear static spring mass system, whereby you actually get to uh, use the three sampling techniques, MCMC, TMCMC and the SMC techniques explained earlier to actually estimate the spring constant of the linear static spring mass system. The 1D simple harmonic oscillator system, where we will work on a dynamic simple harmonic oscillator and we'll use these sampling techniques to actually estimate the spring constant as well. The 2D inverse eigenvalue problem, where we'll observe the applicability of each of the three advanced sampling techniques 
in obtaining samples from a bimodal posterior. And finally, the 18th dimension DLR MOC problem, which allows us to actually appreciate the strength of each of these sampling algorithms in sampling from a high dimensional posterior. So before ending off, I would like to give a brief summary of what we have learned from this two-part series lecture. So by the end of this lecture, we should have a better understanding of the concept behind model updating and the motivation behind the need for such. Model updating it can be categorized in two categories, deterministic versus probabilistic. And we should now, I now have a better understanding of what the difference between these two categories. And we, by now as well, we should also have a better understanding and appreciation of what Bayesian model updating is, and as well as the motivation behind the use of advanced sampling techniques, MCMC, TMCMC, and SMC. One should, will also be able to un should by now be able to also understand the differences between each of these algorithms, as well as the difference in the workings behind each of these techniques. And with that, we have come to the end of this two-part series lecture, and I thank you so much for your undivided attention.